Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys some PVMing tips. And these are basically just some tips that I've picked up over my time PVMing. I'm definitely not a pro at PVM, but I am pretty decent. I do know a lot about it, so I just want to share some of the better tips that I have found with you guys. And hopefully this will help some of you out. This is probably going to be more aimed towards mid-level player people going into bossing as well as some returning players. Um, anyway guys, I really hope you do enjoy this video and hopefully you find a few of these tips helpful for you. So starting off with our first tip, we have action bars and ability rotations. So I do want to briefly talk about some recommended action bars and some abilities that you guys would want to use. As you can see on screen, I do have a sample for both the two-handed melee action bar and the dual wield melee action bar. Um, and I do have the abilities ranked in based on what order you will want to use them in, especially if you do have revolution active. So as you can see, the melee action bar, uh, the two-handed weapon one starts with cleave, goes to dismember, then it goes to sever, smash, Tuska's wrath, uh, followed by fury, slice, and sacrifice. Now the only difference between the dual wield and the two-handed weapon action bar is I swapped out a few of the two-handed specific abilities with the dual wield abilities. So for example, cleave is replaced with decimate and smash is replaced with havoc. Now looking at the ability rotations, this is essentially what you will want to do when you gain 100% adrenaline. So first off, always switch to your ring of vigor if you do have one. Um, this is a really great ring to have and can be purchased from the dungeoneering shop for only 50,000 dungeoneering tokens. What it does, it makes it so when you do use an ultimate ability it only costs 90% adrenaline instead of 100% so you want to wear this and then use the ultimate ability berserk followed by either assault or hurricane um, and then you can also uh, use some other abilities like uh, destroy and smash as well you can also have the blood tendrils which is a really good ability in certain situations um, it does allow you to deal a lot of damage but it also does uh, cause some recoil as well and then also you do have slaughter which is in the ability rotation as well this is an extremely useful ability if your target is moving since it will deal extra damage so you will want to prioritize slaughter in those specific situations now looking at the ranged ability bars we have the two-handed weapon and the dual wield abilities bars they're fairly similar again i just swapped out a few abilities um, based on the two-hand and dual wield mainly the dazing shot and needle strike that is the main difference again the ability rotations you're going to start off with your ring of vigor then go to death swiftness once this ability is activated you are going to want to gain up to 50 percent adrenaline again then use snapshot followed by rapid fire you can also use shadow tendrils as well however it does deal some recoil um, and then bombardment is another really great threshold ability to use as well which does require 50% adrenaline bombardment is also an ability which does deal uh, area effect damage so it is useful um, and should be prioritized if you are attacking multiple targets now looking at our magic action bar as you can see the two-handed and dual wield ability bars they again are very similar the only difference being sonic wave in the fourth slot for the second-handed weapon action bar uh, and then I have a concentration blast for the dual wield in that slot instead. Um, now the ability rotation, it is the same for both as well. First off, again, ring of vigor. Then you're going to want to use sunshine, which is your ultimate ability. You will then want to follow this by using wild magic, asphyxiate, and smoke tendrils. Again, these are just some basic action bars that you guys can have if you're looking to increase your DPS um, as a newer player. Um, but if you are using full manual and you really do understand combat a lot better, there's going to be certain situations where certain abilities are much better to use, and that just takes some time and learning. And usually you'll figure that out with a specific creature or boss that you are fighting. Um, so aside from that, this is just a general few action bars that will help uh, newer players if you're looking just to build a pretty decent one. Now my second PVMing tip is using Resonance as often as possible. Now Resonance is a level 48 defense ability 
It can only be activated when you are wearing a shield, so in a lot of situations you will want to just bring a shield to switch so you can use resonance. Essentially what it is, when it's activated, the next attack, doesn't matter what combat style it is, um, it will actually heal the player instead of damaging you. Um, you'll have six seconds after using it to get this heal. As you can see in this clip, I'm using it against Vindicta, which is a really good boss to use this against, especially on its ranged hit um, when he is uh, Gorphic and Vindicta. Um, and again, it does heal you the amount of life points that you would have taken. So it not only negates one of its attacks, but it also will allow you to heal that life points back. It's really helpful in a lot of bossing and PVM situations. It'll allow you to save some food and also negate an attack. It's a skill that you really should try to learn is just switch onto a shield and use resonance just to heal your life points. Um, and again, it's super helpful in a lot of bossing scenarios. Now moving on to our next tip, it is going to be using the defense ability Devotion. Now, Devotion is also another defensive ability, as I mentioned. Devotion does only require level 1 defense to use. However, you will need to obtain this uh, ability by either unlocking it with 3,500 reward currency from the Anima Islands, which is a D&D, &D, or you can also get it as a rare drop from General Grador or Kreara. Now this ability is super helpful. As you guys can see, when you use it, it actually makes your protection prayers 100% effective. It is obviously really helpful in a lot of bossing scenarios as it will allow you to uh, save yourself from some pretty massive hits and save yourself some food as well. Um, it is a really, really great ability to unlock. So if you guys don't already have it, make sure to get it and use it pretty often in boss fighting. There are certain times where you should use it um, the most, um, for example, in the Raksha fight, if you do get to this phase where he does channel the energy and blasts five waves at you, you should definitely use the devotion there. Um, that way you can just, just block all of the hits that do come at you. Now, moving on to our next tip, we have tick eating. This is a really helpful tip just to heal a lot of life points quickly. Now, as you can see in my keybind, I do have the Blue Blubber Jellyfish, key binded to my B key. Then I also just have eating, just any kind of food to my C, and my Ceratomium Brews uh, key binded to my V key. So if I do hit all three of those keys at the exact same time, I will heal using all three of those items. This is a really big heal if you're using Sailfish as your food. You're healing over 4,000 life points just in one tick. So it is really helpful if you're looking to gain health really fast. Um, for example, if you did take a pretty heavy hit from a boss and you're looking to gain that life points back pretty fast just so you don't get killed. Um, so this is a really helpful tip for you guys. Make sure you do use it. You can do it with just the food and ceratomium brew, um, but if you want to have that extra bit of healing, you can put in some jellyfish as well. The next tip that I want to go over is the power burst of vitality. This is a really useful item for you guys if you're doing certain bosses. Um, so essentially what this does, when you do drink it, it will double your life points. Um, so if you are at max life points, you'll go up to 21,000. If you're at 5,000 life points, you'll go up to 10,000. Um, so this is really helpful in certain bossing scenarios. For example, if you get hit kind of hard or if there's a big attack incoming um, and you want to tank the hit, you can drink this and it will last six seconds um, where you will have double the health and you'll be able to tank the hit pretty easily with this. One boss in particular where this is really useful is Nex. Um, when he does use its uh, ice prison attack, um, you're going to be taking a pretty massive hit when that happens. So if you do have a power burst of vitality there, you'll be able to tank that hit no problem. Our next tip is adrenaline stalling. I also do want to talk about the adrenaline crystals as well. So if you guys do have the PVM hub and you have, I believe, 500 boss skills, you will be able to unlock the adrenaline crystals. These are super helpful when bossing because you'll be able to go up to 100% adrenaline before a boss fight. So for example, as you can see, before I go to fight Raksha, I get my 100% adrenaline and then I stall it by using a defensive ability before going into the fight. Um, that way I am still in combat and I don't lose the adrenaline. This is super helpful because you'll be able to start off, as I mentioned, with your um, death swiftness for your ability rotation, that ultimate ability. 
which will obviously just help your DPS and make your kill times a lot faster. Now moving on to our next tip, it is the Archaeology Relics. This is a really helpful tip for returning players especially. So these relics were introduced into the game along with Archaeology, um, which was released right around April of 2020. So if you guys didn't play before then, these are going to be brand new. Essentially what they are, they're perks that will help you guys out a lot, and there's quite a few of them for uh, combat and PVM. So um, I'm just going to go through them. First is the Font of Life. It will increase your maximum health by 500. Not really a huge effect there, but it is decent. There's Berserker's Fury, which is one of the better ones. It will allow you to deal up to 5.5% damage in any combat style, the lower your current life points are. Um, so this is a really helpful ability, um, if, especially if you're on low life points a lot of the time. Um, the next one is the Death Ward. Uh, it will give you a bit of a damage reduction. Um, then we have Fury of the Small, which is one of my favorites. What this does is all adrenaline generating basic abilities will generate plus 1% adrenaline. This is a really good ability because adrenaline is super useful in combat and will just help you uh, put some more thresholds out and deal more damage per second. The next ability is Persistent Rage, which will allow your adrenaline to not drain outside of combat, essentially meaning so you won't have to adrenaline stall, which was the tip I mentioned earlier. Um, the next one is Heightened Senses. This is increases the maximum adrenaline by 10%. Really good ability, allows you to hold 110% adrenaline at uh, any time, which is really nice. Um, the Conservation of Energy is another ability, so this is after using an ultimate ability. You'll regain 10% Adrenaline, and this does stack with the Ring of Vigor, so if you do wear the Ring of Vigor and have the Conservation of Energy Relic active, you'll have 20% Adrenaline after using um, one of your ultimate abilities. Also, if you guys are interested in the other Archaeology Relics, or even just the ranks of them, I did do a complete ranking video um, on all the archaeology relics, which I will link in the description down below. Moving on to our next tip, we have Vulnerability. Now, Vulnerability is a spell which can be used with magic. However, I want to talk about the Vulnerability Bombs. Um, these can be thrown, which is really helpful because it can be used on any combat style or within any combat style. You won't need to bring the runes to cast a vulnerability, you'll be able to just use one of these vuln bombs. Now what this does is when used on a target, it will increase the damage they receive by 10% for one minute. So as you can see here, I'm just using some abilities on this dummy testing my maximum hit. Um, so I'm going to test out my snapshot. As you can see, it does 4,423 damage. Now, after using a Vuln Bomb, I'm going to test the damage, and it will be 10% higher. So essentially, it is going to increase the damage per second that you are dealing. Um, this is really helpful on a lot of different bosses, as well as various creatures and mobs in RuneScape 3 as well. Um, now, as you can see, here's just a close-up at of the uh, attack before the Vuln Bomb. As you can see, it is 4,423, and then my snapshot after the Vuln Bomb, um, it will be 10% higher at 4,865. So these are going to be increasing your DPS, and again, they're super useful, and there's no reason why not to use these, really. Now the next tip I have for you guys is just make PVM presets. This makes PVMing a lot faster, especially when you're going back and forth from a boss. Um, so me personally, I like having a few different um, presets for different combat styles. So I have a few for ranged, a few for uh, magic. I also have my neck set up as well. Um, it just makes it really easy because when I come back from a boss like Raksha, I can simply just load up my preset instead of filling up my inventory with the food and the brews and all that that I used. Um, so definitely make sure you have a few PVM presets just to speed up your time in between kills. Now this last tip that I have for you guys is using adrenaline potions. And these are really, really helpful when PVMing, especially against certain bosses. So personally, I really like using these against Raksha, and I will show you guys where I do use it mostly. Um, it is best to use after you use a Death Swiftness. So for example, in those ability rotations that I showed you guys earlier in the video, 
um, you can actually put adrenaline potion in that uh, ability rotation technically. Um, you'll want to drink one after you do use an ultimate ability like Death Swiftness, like Berserk, Sunshine. That is because you'll be able to gain more adrenaline. You gain 25% more adrenaline when drinking this potion, allowing to, you to use a lot more thresholds um, in your Death Swiftness where you have the increased damage. This is super helpful because you want to get the most uh, thresholds out with your Death Swiftness active or your Berserk or Sunshine since it does give that damage boost um, and it will just make your kills a lot faster and your DPS a lot higher. Uh, anyway guys, that is it for this video. Those are all the PVMing tips that I have for you guys. But if you can think of any that I haven't mentioned in this video, let me know in the comments down below and I might pin it so everyone else can see. Um, it'll be a nice way to just share um, some PVMing tips with you guys. Um, and hopefully we can have a nice list of other PVM tips that I didn't mention. Anyway guys, I really hope you found this video helpful and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.